Madam Chairman, thank you <laughs> for holding this hearing. To our witnesses, welcome back. Today is going to be a tough hearing, but the American people deserve accountability and transparency. I appreciate that all of you have cleared your schedules to allow multiple rounds of questions today. Next week marks one year of this administration. It also marks two years since the first COVID case was confirmed. President Biden said in his first, second, and third, and third priorities would be bringing us out of COVID pandemic and that his team would shut down the virus. This administration was lucky. It started off on day one with the tools to change the trajectory of COVID response. Operation Warp Speed worked with the private sector to bring us groundbreaking vaccines and treatments in record time. Although we had a very bumpy start with testing early in the pandemic, we successfully built some strong partnerships with the private sector to support the development and manufacturing of more tests. State and local leaders were rising to the challenge of testing and vaccinating their citizens. There was reason for hope. Instead, now a full year later, here's where we are. More than 830,000 deaths caused by COVID, the majority of which occurred under this administration, despite having many tools and significant resources from Congress, including $80 billion plus for testing. A variant is now spreading out of control across the country with places like Washington, D.C., seeing a staggering increase in case counts over the holidays. And now my state of North Carolina is following suit with a 319 percent increase as of yesterday. Over the holidays, when Americans were instructed to do the responsible thing and get tests before they see loved ones, there were no tests on the shelves or online. And hours long lines were the norm at testing sites across the country. The testing situation was worse when many sought tests to safely return to work or to school. And the most vulnerable Americans who contracted the virus could not get the treatments designed to help because they were now in short supply. This administration has time and again squandered its opportunities and made worse in the decisions you've made on testing and treatment and most crucially in communications with the American people. The American people are right to be confused. It seems like you all don't talk amongst yourself. Some examples. Last August, the president announced that boosters would be available to all vaxxed by the week of September 20th. Three of you here today signed that statement, but neither the FDA nor the CDC had yet approved boosters when the president made the promise. And when you went to your advisory panels with a predetermined outcome already made, those independent experts pushed back and ultimately had to be overridden to meet the president's goal on boosters. I know the data shows that boosters are necessary. I'm boosted. I want everybody to get vaccinated and boosted. The facts about the value of vaccines and boosters are crystal clear. But the way this administration rolled out boosters was a disaster. You created skepticism and mass confusion. Example two, last summer, the president dramatically, uh, dramatically announced that CDC recommendations changed so that vaccinated Americans didn't need to wear masks indoors, implying that the worst of the pandemic was behind us, even as the Delta variant was exploding in India. Only after Delta hit America did CDC begin to take it seriously and the administration had to change course. Example three, last week, Dr. Fauci said, that the CDC was going to update its guidance on quarantine. He left the American people with the impression that CDC's guidance was going to include some testing component to reduce the quarantine to five days. But when CDC did update its guidance, there wasn't a testing requirement. Again, I'm not questioning the science. I'm glad you refrained from testing mandates. But I'm questioning your communication strategies. It's no wonder um, the American, it's no wonder that the American people are confused. When the president announced on December 21st that 500 million tests were going to be purchased, he left out that the contract wasn't going to be signed for weeks, and it would take even longer for those tests to, be, to, to materialize. Immediately, other experts and medical professionals were asking what the value of just 1.5 tests per person was when CDC's own guidance said that you need multiple at-home tests to be assured of the results. Yesterday, the administration mandated that insurers now cover the 170 million Americans that are covered by private insurance. They must cover up to eight tests per person per month. That would be 16 billion tests. And we have 500 million today that 
or aspirationally going to be contracted for. It's still unclear when these tests will be available, how to get them, whether any more are on their way. But it's especially frustrating that the White House press secretary had previously mocked the very idea of doing what the president later announced. In a sarcastic and withering tone, when this was first proposed, she had four questions. Whether we should just send one to every American, then what happens, how much does it cost, what happens after that? Those are all good questions that remain unanswered by the administration. My final example, though there are many to choose from, happened last week too. The White House press secretary, a repeat offender in poor communications, was asked about boosters. The press secretary said, and I quote, they can get boosted now regardless of what CDC guidance is, whether you're just approved or for, for a booster or you've been approved for weeks, end quote. Regardless of what CDC guidance is, from the White House podium. And then I was amazed when I got home on Sunday and I had this letter from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services telling me as a Medicare beneficiary that uh, I'm eligible to get a free vaccine booster. Five months after the president announced we we're going to have boosters, we're, this is the first communication from CMS that I've gotten as a Medicare beneficiary in the two years of COVID. And all of a sudden, I get a request to get boosted. Um, when a Republican governor or a, for, or a senator, including some on this committee, suggests concerns about CDC guidance, Twitter and MSNBC can't react fast enough with scorn and anger. So it can't come as a surprise that there is confusion and anger when the White House says to ignore CDC guidance. I tell my staff, as I've repeatedly said to you all in all previous hearings, to look 30, 60, 90 days ahead. Look six months ahead. Look abroad. See what's happening in Asia, Europe, Israel, Africa, UK, and elsewhere around the world. What do we need to anticipate? In our hearing on July 20th, I warned that Delta would, be, would not be our last variant. And I pleaded with each of you to have a plan in place for the next mutation of the virus. So why was the Vice President surprised that Omicron came to our shores. Well, I'll say it's very clear, very clearly. So the administration does not yet again say they're surprised. Viruses change, viruses mutate. There will be more variants. They will come to America, period, end of sentence. I don't understand why after tens of billions of federal dollars being appropriated, this administration has failed to ensure that the Americans have the tests they need. I don't understand why suddenly it's okay to take into account the economic and job impact of your guidance and recommendations. You shortened the quarantine guidance because too many people would be out of work. Was that because of science or was it because you now know that lockdowns, shutdowns, and school closures come with a significant downside impact? You ask the American people to trust you. Quite frankly, you've lost their trust. Rather than attempting to gain their trust back, the administration chooses to litigate mandate requirements for employers with over 100 employees. I've asked before, what's the plan? Never gotten a response. Very seldom do I get a letter responded to by this administration. The administration's not responded to my letters. Maybe folks at the White House don't think they need to respond to Republican senators. I think my record shows I'm approaching all of this as I have for the last 20 years. I'm trying to help. I love this country, love its people, and I know we can do better than we've done. I know we have to do better. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe you'll tell me where I got it wrong. Instead, I'm hoping that you'll understand that my criticism comes from a place of concern because the communication efforts are a mess and have only made things worse. Now, I admit it. I'm at the end of my rope. I think you'll see today that most of my colleagues are as well. I've tried to give my best advice and share what we hear and what we see because no one's paying attention to the message from this administration right now. Maybe today you respond to my request to learn what the plan is. Hopefully you'll take this challenge to rebuild the trust, not just with me, not just with my colleagues, but with the American people we all serve. 
What are you changing in fiction to restore the confidence with the American people that there is a strategy for testing, for treatments, for fixing your communication strategy? Because if you don't, things are going to get worse before they get better. Madam Chairman, I yield back.